Hey, it's Tom, and today I'm going to show you how to use Node.js for load testing, or how you can use that to perform a DDoS attack. This video will have a little bit different form because I think that my videos were a little bit too longer in the past. So let's try this new form. And if you like this form more, let me know down in the comment sections. Okay, so let's jump to the code. Okay, so today uh, we have a Node.js app that I already uh, wrote for, for you. And we'll just un uncomment and explain how the logic is working. So basically we will use three libraries to today. So the first one is Axios. Axios is a promise-based HTTP client for Node.js and for browser. And uh, it allows us to easily intercept uh, requests and responses. That's why I prefer that over uh, the basic um, node fetch. Mm. It's just easier and allows us easier to uh, add custom features than node fetch. Uh, the second one is child process. Child process is a, a library that is already probably built into Node.js if you will download the newest version, the 14.0. And this library allows us to basically create child processes uh, and, and run them um, in parallel. And the last one is Minimist. Minimist is, uh, is a library that allows us to easily parse uh, argument options that we provide when running our code. Okay, so let's start with the very uh, simple um, app that will just uh, send a request and check the response from the server. Because uh, basically we will just want to send a multiple requests at once to a server and then check how the server is handling that. Uh, for this purpose, we will to today use uh, my own blog but you can also use this technique to uh, test efficiency of your uh, app that you are working on. For example, if you have some server that is fetching data from database or is processing data, then you can just uh, simulate uh, a typical usage, like uh, 10 clients trying to perform the same, the same action once at once, and then you will be able to, to see how your server is behaving. So right here we have a child.js file and in this file we import Axios, we import Minimist and Minimist uh, basically is uh, slicing the arguments vector and removing the two first uh, elements. So why this is happening? Because if you run any type of uh, any type of Node.js app, let me run maybe this one, uh, and you will provide some parameters. And even if you won't pro provide any of them, then you will always have these two first uh, uh, arguments provided to the code. The first one is the environment that we are using to run the code. And in this case, is it's Node. And the second is directory in which uh, is the um, source code that we are uh, executing. So right here, you see how I'm structuring my data. It's in YouTube catalog uh, 2020 and DDoS in Node.js. So that was uh, the very first title of this video that I wanted to use. And the, the third parameter is uh, uh, dash dash URL equals, and this is the URL that we will use uh, to send a request. And if we will pro provide anything else, like test, test2, um, then you will see that the arguments vector is just growing. So Minimist is just slicing those two first elements because they don't matter for, for us, in our case at least, uh, because we, we don't need that. Okay, so uh, our uh, Minimist allows us to, to easily access the parameters and thanks to that um, we don't have to parse the uh, as you have seen the the element uh, before so right here this is the element in uh, arguments vector so in this case we would have to use the regular expression to to find this uh, and uh, this this pattern and uh, 
um, get the data that we are interested in. And in this case, uh, if we will pro provide the key, like in our case is the URL, uh, we will be able to, to uh, get that. And uh, I can show you that it is working. So let's do it like this. And right now we'll have, yeah, as you see, the, the data is parsed in a proper way, which is, which is great. Okay, so we want to send the request. And uh, then if there is a success, log success. If not, then we can log the failure and the, the exact error. But uh, in our case, it doesn't really matter. Mm. I will tell you later on uh, why we want to uh, provide exit codes. So the good thing about access, as I mentioned, is ability to uh, intercept requests and responses. And in our case, we will add both interceptors for uh, request and response. So for request, we want to add uh, additional fields to, to the metadata. And this will be start time because we are interested in the time uh, of the request, of each request before the response will be received. So we add a new field called start time and this will be new date. And we also will add an interceptor to the response and this field will be the end time. And maybe let's count the dur duration. So the difference between the end time and start time and this will be a duration in milliseconds. So right here, if the request is successful, uh, we can actually write the, the particular uh, response time. So yeah, we can stop providing these parameters. They, they don't matter for us. And yeah, success, uh, 1200 milliseconds. So it's over one second. It's, it's working pretty slow. However, if we will run that again, yeah. It's, it's just a matter of, of the uh, network. So right here, as you see, we have a working very simple app that is able to send a, a, to, to parse an argument and send a request and then uh, pre print the um, duration. And by, by default, uh, this is uh, one of the processes that we will be going to run. Okay, so now let's uh, switch to the uh, more interesting part of, of the app. Let's maybe comment that out. And in this case, uh, we, want, we want to run multiple processes at once. So the code that is in the child.js file uh, will be used as a child process. So we want to create multiple processes and execute the child.js code. To do this, uh, as I mentioned, we will use the child processes, uh, child process library that allows us to create a multiple processes. And then uh, at least in theory, they will uh, work simultaneously. And uh, using multiple processes is the best way to uh, scale a Node.js application. Uh, and it's Node.js is in general designed to, to, to be built as a distributed si systems and applications with many nodes. So this is exactly what, what we want to do. So we define an um, amount of uh, child processes. In this case, it might be just two. And then we want to call the child process.spawn method. The spawn method is just spawning new child processes and is returning us uh, a child process that is created. And uh, it's important to remember that child processes are designed to not be created manually, but be only returned from the child process uh, spam, child process execute process, or uh, child proc dot, uh, create process, something like, like that. There are a couple methods that we can use uh, spawn is the uh, the most basic and uh, the one that's totally enough for us. So right here uh, we pro provide par parameters that we want to uh, use to execute the 
uh, child processes. The first one is, in our case, the environment that we want to use. It's of, it's of course Node. The second one, uh, it's just like in, in console. So uh, there's Node and then there is uh, child.js. Uh, actually, we don't have to provide the .js, but it's just clearer to, to uh, understand. And the third one, uh, because that's the array of, of, of parameters, uh, and the third one is, in our case, the URL, exactly as we, we were doing that from a console. Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe let's save that and run and see what will happen. So we want to run node index. Okay. Okay, nothing happened because probably, uh, yeah. Nothing happened because uh, we just created those processes, but we are not allowing them to print to our console because uh, right now when we execute the uh, index uh, process, uh, those uh, child processes uh, don't have access to our uh, to our console. So we can uh, make some some change. Maybe let's do something like this to to just show you how it's working. So child process. Uh, luckily, child processes uh, have a lot of methods that we can use to to listen to data. And right now, when we execute this code, it should, yeah. So as you see, uh, there are uh, child STD outs. And the problem with that is that, as you probably noticed, this is formatted in a very bad way. And uh, it's not useful for, for us. That's why we can make a small change and stop using the console log but use process standard output. The, uh, the difference between uh, standard output and console is that console is in general calling the process uh, stdout.write, but the console is providing a new line at the end of each uh, write. And the second thing is that when we use process.stdout, uh, we are sure that we have to provide a string. So the, da the data that, 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 that will be outputted will be a string and will be formatted as we uh, format that. And if we use uh, console.log, we can provide a whole object which will uh, print that in, in multiple lines like, like JSON object. Mm, because we want to use this data that is provided by, ch by child process, let's use process standard out, right? And uh, thanks to that, we will be able to uh, read the data in a in a better way. So if we will run that again, yeah, as you see, uh, the the output from child processes uh, is much cleaner. It has just one line. It's formatted in a very easy to to use way. Okay, so let's go back here and maybe comment that. And what we want to do right now is to uh, run multiple processes like 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 hundred of them and then wait for them to to be finished and then check how many of them were successful how many of them were failures and in our case we will also check the average time of the of the uh, request and uh, getting the response from from the server so right here uh, i prepared this kind of code maybe let's delete that because we don't need that here. So for, for that, we will have uh, an array of children of all child processes that were created. And then there is also uh, an array called times because that will be the array that will contain data from the child processes. Each child process at the end of the process is writing the duration of the request as we wrote that previously. Okay. So uh, we will use the, the, the map function of the uh, array uh, to change those child processes into promises. So uh, right here, we have the method that I, that I presented to you uh, a moment ago. So each time the child will uh, print something to the standard output, 
we will just parse that data because we know that it's integer of milliseconds and put into times, push into times. And then each time a child will finish, will, will exit, uh, then we will just uh, re resolve the promise either with true or false. And uh, actually the only thing that we need to add right here is to add the process uh, exit code to be equal one because by default each process if 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 it not fails has the exit code equal to zero uh, because that's the default exit code meaning that the process was successful so when we want to uh, finish the process successful with the good response with the proper response from from server we should provide the exit code equal to zero but it's not necessary uh, by default if nothing will fail or the process will be explicitly, explicit, explicitly <laughs> set to one, uh, it will be the zero. So if the request fails, we set the exit code to be one. If, if it's successful, we set it to be zero. Okay, uh, let's delete that because that's not necessarily here. And uh, yeah. If the, if the code is equal to zero, then we resolve the promise with success. If it's a failure, we resolve that with false. And then we can use the promise all to wait until all promises will be resolved. And then there's the last part that uh, is here. So that's a trick that I uh, learned from Kyle Simpson. <laughs> Uh, that we can uh, just just use to to check if if all uh, uh, promises were resolved successfully, we can just filter the uh, boolean of 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 the array and then check the length, and then we'll be able uh, to verify if all uh, um, booleans in the array are successful, are true, and then. Uh, we will just count the the sum of of the times uh, of all processes and then let's count the average value so right now we will be able to to check uh, what's the what's the average time okay so maybe let's run the code and right now okay we just run it uh, on two child on two childs let's maybe change that to 20 or maybe 200 okay let's run it okay you see it's it's growing uh, at to a certain point it might be also uh, because of the network speed but I have a pretty decent uh, network connection at home so it shouldn't be a problem it's few hundred megabytes per second so uh, it should be okay and as you see Right now we we started 200 processes, and as you see, the average time is growing. So that's everything what I prepared for for you. Of course, this uh, source code will be available uh, on my GitHub. The link will be down below in the description of this video. And in general, I wanted to show you a way in which you can easily test your own servers and maybe even your own blocks. Uh, how they behave with a big amount of requests. Um, it's really useful, small uh, piece of code that you can use to verify if your even simple app that is using some some kind of uh, processing of data or uh, fetching data from database, how it's behaving when uh, there is a, a increase in amount of requests. Okay, so that's it for to today. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching and see you next time, bye!